Hello everyone and welcome back into another video. Today we are back in Remnant 2 because the new DLC just dropped and it has added a bunch of new stuff and I'm just gonna showcase the new weapon which are these huge gauntlets. And what these gauntlets do is uh, it allows you to basically do this. And I think that's just amazing. But that's enough introduction, so let's um, let's not jump, let's roll into the build. Alright, I'm using a combo of Warden and Challenger. The Warden is really good at gaining shields, and Challenger is really good at buffing melee damage and also gaining a ton more damage resistance. So pairing the two classes, we are going to be insanely tanky, and we also have a lot of melee damage. The new class Warden's Prime Perk is dynamic and this grants you a shield after not being damaged for 10 seconds and the shield amount is 23% of your HP so you have to wait a little bit to gain the full shield. Comes with 3 skills, they do grant you different buffs and they do different things, for example the shield drone grants you shields, the healing drone will heal you and the combat drone is there to deal some damage to enemies in range. All the drones have a special ability, for example the shield drone grants the warded target 10% damage reduction and also passive shield regeneration. The heal drone grants 10% relic use speed and also heals the warded target by 15%. Finally we have the combat drone that increases fire rate and melee speed by 10% and decreases firearm charge time by 10%. It also targets enemies, so it's basically a sentinel that will follow you and clear all the trash mobs. All the drones start at 150 energy whenever you cast them and they lose energy every time they use their abilities. They all regenerate energy after being inactive for 5 seconds or if they reach 0 energy they will start regenerating energy at a faster rate. You can also command the drones, for example by single pressing the ability after you have a drone active, you give the drone to the targeted ally, if you double tap the ability the drone comes back to you. And if you hold the ability, you stow the drone and it starts regenerating energy at an even faster rate. And for this build, we are going to use the combat drone because it does deal some passive damage, it grants us melee speed, but if you feel more comfortable with shields or more healing, then go for the other drones, they are also very very good. As for the challenger, we are using Juggernaut and this ability grants us 3 stacks of bulwark, 15% movement speed, more melee speed and reduced stamina cost. Additionally, it also increases melee damage by 50% and reduces stagger level by 1, the ability lasts for 36.2 seconds and it has a cooldown of 42. Let's now talk about the prism system because it's new and it's very easy to understand. You basically have this prism here that you can equip and there are different ones because they will all have different stats that you can modify when you want. A prism starts at level 0 and you have to level it up by doing missions, killing stuff and gaining SP in the same way as leveling up your classes. Whenever a prism levels up, it grants you a choice between three cards and these three cards will have different stats. For example, after upgrading this prism, I got range crit chance. These stats are gonna be random at base, so you just have to pick whatever the prism gives you, but you can narrow down those stats by feeding the prisms your fragments. For example, if I want mod crit chance on my prism, I feed the mod crit chance to my prism and it gains this roll chance. In this case, for example, I fed the prism crit damage, range crit chance, range damage, skill cooldown and skill duration, then that means I have a higher chance to gain those stats and after I lock all the slots with those stats then I will only get this one so what you want to do is lock the stats you want first and then level them up. Each stat can go to a maximum of plus 10 and every level increases the percentage by a little bit until you have plus 10 on all your stats that means reaching level 50 on your prism and after that you are allowed to choose from three legendary stats that are going to give you some very interesting buffs. For example this prism gave me the choice to grab luck of the devil which grants extreme luck and that means I just gain a ton more rewards from chests and probably does something else we don't know yet this update is really new so there's a lot of stuff to uncover after reaching max level on your prism you can cleanse the stone to reset it completely if you for example want to change something else so yeah it will take a while if you want to reroll a prism but there are seven slots for your prism so if one of them doesn't roll as you want for now just get another one and start from scratches it's just faster also, every time you feed the relic fragment to the prism, it also grants you a bit of XP. So if you have like a ton of uh, relic fragments, uh, then yes, you can level up your prisms that way. But it's really, really expensive, so I do not actually recommend that, but it's a thing you can do. 
and finally stats have a chance to combine so for example skill cooldown and skill duration have a chance to combine after reaching both of them plus five uh, that is completely random and it's not worth rerolling your prism for i just think it's nice if you can grab that special bonus because it does free one of the slots and that means you basically have one slot with two stats and you can add something else in the empty slot and that's pretty much the new prism system there's going to be better videos if you want a more in detail guide i just wanted to explain it in a few words so we are on the same track now fragments are gonna work in the same way so you just keep the fragments you want and they will give you the buffs so for this build we are using health bonus we are then using melee damage and melee crit chance and for your prism what i recommend going for is melee damage melee crit chance health bonus and then armor bonus and either more base health or you can go for like skill duration or skill cooldown to reduce the cooldown of your skills or increase the duration by another 10 percent i'm currently using this one because it's the only one i was able to max out and it's actually not that bad because skill cooldown skill duration and cast speed are all pretty good Okay, that was a lot to take in, but we're now back to a more familiar screen, which is your character screen. And these are the traits I went for. We have Barrier for more shield, Strong back to reduce weight threshold by 15, Triage to increase healing, Fortify to increase armor effectiveness, Regrow to regenerate some passive HP, Gifted to increase skill duration, Vigor for more max health, Expertise to reduce skill cooldown, Amplitude for bigger AoEs, Siphoner for more lifesteal, and these traits all have 10 points, then we have 7 points in Leech for more lifesteal efficacy, and finally 2 points in Spirit and 1 in Endurance because they were just there. I'm using the full Leto Mark II armor because I think it's the best for this build, because it still allows you to dodge, and it's also the one that gives you the most amount of armor, so it makes you really really tanky. I'm using the Profane Heart for the 3% lifesteal bonus, and on use to increase all lifesteal efficacy by 50% for 15 seconds. I never had to use this relic at all while playing with this build, but if you are in a bad situation, then yes, definitely pop a relic, grab yourself those shields, and also get yourself the damage bonus, and start blasting the enemy. Then what you want to use is the Magiarch's Insignia. This amulet grants you 35% more melee damage and causes all your melee attacks to restore 10 stamina. That's really important because the beam that the Gauntlet summon is considered melee damage, so we're going to restore a lot of stamina. Then we're using the Sealed Resin Loop to cancel melee attacks mid-action. Then we're using Dying Ember to gain 6% of base melee damage as lifesteal. Drake Stone Pearl to regenerate stamina 20% normal rate while performing melee attacks. And finally Rally Band to convert our great health into health with our melee strikes. And once again, that beam will make this ring work over time and it will basically heal all our grey health in a second. And the maximum amount of grey health to health conversion is 10% of your max HP. Uh, it's not gonna be important because, again, we are going to regenerate our grey health in an instant, so yeah, that doesn't bother us. For your long gun, you can use anything you want. I just like the pulse rifle because it's a solid weapon, and I'm using the harvester bots because they will grant you even more life steal. So that's pretty much why I'm using that. But if you want to use another mod, it's up to you. And for the mutator, I'm using harmonizer. Moving to the handgun, I'm using the nebula. And Nebula's mod is really good because it does deal some passive damage and also applies Corroded. And for the Mutator, I'm using Feedback to regenerate 20% of the mod total damage back into mod power. And finally, we have the Dark Matter Gauntlets, the cornerstone of our build. As we said, this weapon allows us to fire beams that will deal an insane amount of damage and also summon these blast attacks that are pretty cool. And the way you do that is by charging one melee attack first. This Kilonova buff lasts for 15 seconds and decreases your standard melee damage by 25% and then all the other charge attacks will summon this 12 meters penetrating blast but every time you do one of these special charge attacks you lose I think it's two seconds of this buff so you have to be careful and not do it too much because if you reduce it too much you gain a debuff that doesn't allow you to recast Kilonova so be careful. Additionally, by performing a neutral backdash and then a charge attack, you can hold the attack button and start charging this beam. The more you charge it, up to 5 seconds, the more it will last, up to 5 seconds. And this beam deals 510 melee damage every 0.5 seconds. As I said before, it's considered melee damage, so that means all those items we have that are activated by melee damage are going to be activated, and that is very, very strong. After fully discharging the beam, Kilonova will just end 
and then you have to do another charge attack to empower your gauntlets again. So basically the combo looks something like this, you charge your gauntlets, you backdash, you hold the attack button, and then you discharge the melee. And yeah, it deals, uh, it deals a nice amount of damage. And the amount of damage you can expect by performing this special combo is um, is actually pretty good. It's um, it's about like 2,000 for each beam, and each beam will deal around 13,800 damage. So yeah, it's uh, it's a ton of damage, and you just have to do this once in a while. So you charge it and you release it, and it deals damage. You can aim it where you want. It's a bit hard to aim it because it's very, very slow. Uh, yeah, that, that cut, you can see how much I was moving my mouse, but yeah, I think they, will, they might fix that. We will see. And now if we cast our drone to gain that melee speed and also the challenge buff, we can charge the gauntlets, do the backdash, and then our damage is gonna be just a little bit higher just a little bit it's uh it's about it's about 19,000 um 18,500 i think it is if we don't consider the drone damage but as you can see the drone does deal some nice passive damage which is pretty cool and of course we can cast our mod here those nanobots will grant us more life seal which is pretty cool we can cast our nebula and that will make the dummy in this case take more damage so yeah i mean there are all those bows that we are using and that grant us even more damage, so yeah, overall it's a, it's a really satisfying build and you're going to be pretty much immortal because of all the resistances we have, all those shields, uh, if we cast a relic again we grab that shield bonus and also all the other buffs, I mean there, there is so much stuff we just gained that is, it's, um, it's really hard to kill you. We are also using steadfast on the weapon and that means that the our charge beam attacks cannot be interrupted. We also gain 10% damage reduction from all sources, and that is insanely strong just by itself. And it becomes even better because all the damage we take while performing our charge attack, which by the way, the beam is considered a charge attack as well. Uh, so you can see where this is going. All the damage we take is converted to gray health. And then we're going to use the rally band to convert the gray health back into HP with our melee strikes. So yeah, all the damage you take is converted almost instantaneously into HP again. In addition to all of that, we have an insane amount of life steal from a ton of sources, a lot more damage thanks to Juggernaut, and yeah, you are not gonna die and you are gonna deal a stupid amount of damage. So yeah, this build is, at the moment, for me at least, one of the best builds after the update and of course there are gonna be some changes you can apply to the build to make it even better and fit your playstyle even more for example if you want you can unequip the seated racing loop and add something else in here i just like it because you can literally interrupt any attack and just dodge which is uh, is really helpful for melee playstyle but of course if you want to add something else like more damage more survivability that is pretty much your free slot for your rings and that is pretty much the build. These new Dark Matter Gauntlets are just so good looking and also insanely insanely strong. I just love them so much. I will leave you guys to the actual showcase now where I test this weapon in a boss rush because uh, that's a neat new game mode we just got from the update and it's the best way to fight bosses so yeah i'm going to showcase that triple threat because it does take a while to go through one of these ones imagine a full gauntlet and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did remember to leave a like and subscribe for more content have a great rest of the day and bye bye